Good evening, my name is Tammy and I'm a nurse practitioner here at Anna Shaw Children's Institute. And today I'm so excited to talk to you uh, about one of the most anticipated holidays of the year and personally one of my favorites, Halloween. So Halloween can be a very exciting time for children. Um, it's a time of trick-or-treating, Halloween parties, lots of candy, um, costume fun, a time where we can choose to be anything that we wanna be. Um, and just one of the um, funnest times for kids. Um, but for a lot of our kids um, here at Anna Shaw Children's Institute and throughout our community, um, we have a lot of kids with sensory sensitivities and Halloween can be a time of chaos and, and uh, anxiety and cause um, nervousness. Um, it can be a scary time. Uh, there's a lot of scary decorations and sounds and uh, strobe lights and things that can be um, very scary for these kiddos. Um, it can also be a time where it's not always comfortable. You know, we were picking out costumes and they can be bulky and itchy. Um, and it can also be a really noisy time, especially during class parties or um, when we go out into the community and trick or treat in areas where there's um, a lot of people. Um, it can be really noisy, really crowded, and in the end can just cause like a tantrums and, and breakdowns. So today we're here to talk to you about uh, some ways that we can help uh, prepare trick or treating and making it a happy time for everyone. So um, it's always uh, a great idea to try to think about some alternatives to trick or treating. If you, uh, if your child has had, um, you know, an anxious time in the past with it, or um, maybe you want to do something a little more family friendly. Um, so in not only in our community, the many communities, um, a lot of churches, um, they put out trunk or treats. Um, and even though they may be dressed up, it may be more um, fun or um, uh, family friendly. Um, costumes and uh, you're less likely to hear less spooky noises and sounds. Um, other things that we can do, we can you can get with other uh, families, other children in the community that also have sensory sensitivities and just um, stay in and uh, do do some fun things with those families. Um, you can make it, you know, stay at home night, uh, carve pumpkins, pass out candy. And if you are going to pass out candy, we, you know, I would recommend just ahead of time talking to your kids and saying, hey, there are going to be people um, coming to our, you know, to our door. They're going to knock. Um, be prepared for the noise. Be prepared to tell them, like, uh, talk about different types of costumes. Some costumes are silly. Some might be a little scary. So, um, but give them that heads up and prepare, prepare them. Um, there's also um, daytime community events like fall festivals um, that you can also attend. So just kind of do your homework and know what's available in your area. And so if you do decide to go trick-or-treating, um, it's uh, also very important, just um, prepare your child for it. There's a really, um, some good social stories online that you can sit down and um, read with your child. Uh, the um, autismspeaks.org actually has several um, where you can go on and kind of print off and just kind of, you know, it helps kind of tell them, you know, talking about costumes and talking about um, etiquette and, um, and give them some idea of what it's gonna be like and what to expect. Um, if you have a nonverbal child, you can practice with them opening their bag um, when they walk up to a house. Um, you can consider uh, either the little badges with lanyards um, or there are trick-or-treating buckets or bags that um, lets others know how your, that your child may uh, communicate differently. Um, and also, you know, going ahead of time and preparing them on the, you know, go and kind of walk the route ahead of time. And uh, also we'll give you a chance to kind of know what houses you need to avoid. Maybe some that have scary decorations in their yard, flashing lights. And so um, just preparing them um, for things that they may see on that evening. 
Other things um, to be prepared for is the weather. Um, make sure we pack an umbrella or a rain jacket with this just in case. A lot of our kids do not like the feeling of being wet. So definitely um, have that prepared for them. Um, although we would like to control all situations, there are some things that may be out of your control. Maybe there could be some, some sudden sounds or just some really loud or scary, spooky noises. Um, and so take along a pair of headphones or earplugs and have those available for them. Um, also be prepared to take some sensory breaks. Um, bring along some of their favorite sensory items in case they get overwhelmed, you know, take them to a quiet spot in the car um, and somewhere where they just have that chance to kind of um, uh, be in the quiet and feel better. Um, here's some examples of uh, like some lanyards um, that you can find uh, that, like I said, you can put it around their neck and it just lets people know that uh, your child is nonverbal. They may not say trick or treat or they may not say please or thank you. Um, also, they have little cards that you can print offline that your child can give out um, and it just lets others know, you know, that you're saying trick or treat and you're saying happy Halloween and thank you. Um, and then here we have, um, over the last few years, the blue bucket has become a trend and it's um, just a, um, also another way to communicate that the child that is carrying this bu bucket may have autism um, and can make it a little bit more, uh, people can prepare and be a little bit more sensory friendly for these children. Costumes can be a really, big issue when it comes to Halloween. Um, and so remind your child that it's okay if they do not want to wear a costume. They don't have to wear a costume. It's not required in order to get candy. Um, you can opt into, you know, just finding a Halloween themed t-shirt that they may like. Or there's some really cute pajama costumes like um, that wear dinosaur. I think they also have like unicorn, Spider-Man, things like that, that are just um, that really like uh, soft cotton material. Um, and materials are something we should think about when we pick out a costume, um, you know, things that we want to think about. Is it itchy? Is it too tight and restrictive? Um, you know, a lot of our kiddos don't like tags, so make sure you remove the tags or it may need to be washed ahead of time because they don't like the smell. So those are things to take into consideration also. Um, and also make sure they're wearing something comfortable under their clothes and allow them to take a break from their costume if they like. Um, so that way they're still wearing something underneath that um, will make them feel much better. Um, another good idea is to let them, days before Halloween, let them practice wearing their costume around the house. Um, and that way, if there's any modifications that need to be made or if they just realize, like, this is not comfortable for me, um, then that's a, that I kind of give you a heads up ahead of time. Um, make sure they're wearing comfortable shoes. Um, that they can walk in and be comfortable. And so some safety tips, um, and this doesn't always just go for our, um, our sensory sensitive friends, but um, staying close to home in a familiar area, a, um, a place where your child um, does feel familiar, they may recognize some neighbor houses, um, or also an area where people might recognize your child just in case um, something were to happen and they do um, somehow break away from you. Um, it's also a really good practice to take a picture of your child in their costume costume before you leave uh, the house, just in case they were to wander off. You have um, a picture of what uh, they currently are wearing and what they look like. Um, and so sometimes it's a good idea uh, to go out during daylight, like go as soon as trick-or-treating um, starts, kind of choose a short route. Um, so that way they're kind of in by dark when it can be more crowded and overstimulating. Um, also, we'd recommend putting your child in light up shoes, glow bracelets, um, use this just to make um, them easier to be seen in the dark. Um, and also you can have also some form of identification on them, whether um, you can 
kind of write down um, their name, your name, phone numbers on a piece of paper, and you can just like safety pin it to their costume. Um, you can also just kind of take a Sharpie and write it on their bucket also, or maybe on their um, trick-or-treating bag, uh, just in case they were to get separated and it would make um, them easier to get back in touch with their parents. Also, we can teach our kids some trick-or-treating etiquette. Um, as you're going and maybe doing your walkthrough ahead of time, you know, kind of teach them that if a porch light is on, it's okay to walk up and, and knock on the door. Um, and then maybe if a porch light isn't on, we don't go to that house. Maybe that um, family isn't there or they do not practice trick-or-treating. So um, that's something to keep in mind. Also, um, teaching them about learning um, to wait in line for their turn. They may go up to a house and there's already several children in line. So it's a good time to just practice like like we wait here and we wait for our turn and um, if a child is verbal you can um, you can teach them to say uh, trick-or-treat to request candy um, also just teaching them to say please and remember to say thank you after they receive their candy um, and also it, it's also a good time to also um, uh, learn how to decline kindly. Maybe the child looks in the bucket and they see something that just doesn't interest them. Um, we can teach them to say, no, thank you. Or maybe we can say, you know what, if you see something that you don't like, just take it anyway and you can maybe give it to a sibling or give it to a friend. Um, and then, of course, um, for everyone, it's very important that uh, before they begin to eat any candy at all, um, that it is inspected by an adult before they. Um, partake in their treats. And so here we have a picture. This is how we celebrated Anna Shaw last year, and we do plan to do that again this year. So here's a variety of some family uh, type costumes that uh, aren't so scary for the kids. And so thank you so much for uh, watching this presentation and we hope you have a very happy Halloween from all the people here at Anishal Children's Institute. Have a good day.